Hey everybody, Mr. Myes is here, and in this video I'd like to talk to you about exponential functions. So we're going to look at, this is for um, Calculus AB, Calculus Essentials, uh, and we're going to go ahead and look at our example. So let's take a look here, and we'll look at our exponential functions. So an exponential function is any function that has a number raised to a power of x. So like 3 to the x squared minus 5, 2 to the x, y equals e to the x. This is very common. This one, e to the x, is very common in calculus. So get used to e. I'll talk about what the number e is in just a few minutes here. Um, um, but just on a review side, you have to be able to use and manipulate um, exponentials using all of those exponential properties that you learn in you know algebra 2 or pre-calculus um, but here are all the exponential properties that you're going to need to memorize so you just going to need to know these by hand a lot of you have done this over and over again so these aren't uh, really difficult to, to remember um, but make sure you're memorizing them this is a, a really important note I see this a lot of times on a lot of students they make this mistake they do a plus b to the x and they try to they try to uh, distribute that x you cannot distribute that x when you have a plus there okay you can only distribute it when you have a like if it's raised to a power or if it's a multiplication like number five here but you cannot and do not distribute the x if there's a plus in the middle let's take a look at a few examples of these so when simplifying we want to leave the answers with no negative exponents all right so if we start with a negative exponent, we want to try to get it so that there's no negative exponents. So we have 27 to the 4 thirds. Well, 27 to the 4 thirds, let's, let's zoom in here. Um, 27 to the 4 thirds, this is 27, this is the cube root, because the 1 third, this is the, the third, the bottom right there is the root. Okay, so the denominator is the root. This denominator is the root. And the 4 is the power. So really, this looks like this. The cube root of 27 raised to the 4th. The cube root of 27 is 3 raised to the 4th. So we get 81. That's it. E plus 1 over E. Now, E is a number. E is a number. It's approximately um, 2.7. So just remember that, and I have this down here somewhere my next page um, e is a number in between two and three I'll give you what it's about in just a second but a number plus a number these are both numbers they're not variables raised to the zero power now anything raised to the zero power is just one so it's kind of a trick question there all right so this one we're going to simplify this one out so what we're going to do here is um, I'm going to combine these two by adding the exponents so I'm going to have e to the squared over e to the fourth squared then I'm going to subtract these exponents and since I want this to be in um, I want this to all have positive powers and no negative I'm going to subtract 2 from the 4 and I'm going to have 1 over e squared squared which is 1 over e to the fourth okay all right 5 cubed times 25 to the negative 2. All right. I know that 25 is 5 squared. So I'm going to change 25 to 5 squared. Now that I have, I'm going to multiply these two. Now that I have the bases the same, I'm going to add the exponents. And I'm going to get 5 to the negative 1, which is 1 fifth. Okay, the negative 1 power brings it down to the bottom. All right, let's solve this without using a calculator. So without using a calculator, we're going to need to make these into, um, in this case, we're, since we know 9 is a power of 3, and we know 27 is a power of 3, we can make them both the same base, and then we can just do 2x equals 3, x equals 3 halves. That's all you got to do for that one, all right? If they were not the same base, then we would need to be using logarithms, which I'll get to later on um, in a different video. So let's take a look. If you have a calculator handy, why don't you go ahead and put y equals 2x, y equals 5x, and y equals e to the x in your, um, in your calculator and take a look to see what similarities you see in the graph before I do it now. So y equals 2x, 
is going to look like this. Well, it really crosses at 1. Okay. Y equals e to the x is e is just slight, uh, just a little bit bigger than 2. So this is going to, they're actually going to have the same asymptote. They're going to cross the same place, but it's going to increase a little bit faster. And then 5, well, 5 is bigger than 2 or th e. So they're going to still have the same asymptote, still have the same y-intercept, but this is going to increase like that. So as your um, base gets larger, the increasing uh, slope, right, increasing slope of that is going to increase faster at a faster, um, this is going to, to go up at a faster rate. So here are some basic things about graphing exponential functions, all right? So when we're graphing exponential functions, the domain is going to be from positive infinity to negative infinity, just like we saw. The range is going to be from 0 to infinity because we have a horizontal asymptote at the uh, y, at the x-axis. It's our horizontal asymptote, so we have n behavior that looks like this. The graph of f is going to be continuous. It's going to increase and be concave upward. It's also going to be a one-to-one -one function, which means it has an inverse that's also a function. And the y-intercept is always going to be 0, 1, as long as it's in this form. Okay. Um, and another key point is going to be 1 comma a. So whenever we plug 1 in for x, well, it's just going to be a to the 1. So that's the other point. So um, here's the basic idea of the letter e. The letter e is a base. Um, we call it the natural base. So we use these a lot in calculus. It's the most common base used in calculus because it's the easiest to work with when we're talking about differentiating or integrating. By definition, e is equal to this crazy limit here. All right. Well, you're not going to really need to be able to do that limit. However, you do need to know that E is about 2.718. And the idea when I just talked about just a second ago, just knowing that E is about 2.7 is going to help you later on when you're trying to figure these things out numerically. So let's take a look and try to graph the graph of Y equals E to the X without using a calculator. Well, we already know that it's going to cross at 0 1 and we also know that when x is equal to 1 y is going to be equal to e which we said is approximately 2.718 so that's going to be about right there and we're going to follow it along and have a horizontal asymptote and that's about it that's about all you can do with that sketch all right so using adjustments to the graph that we just did let's go ahead and graph y equals negative x plus 1 so here's what i'm going to do i'm going to draw y equals e to the x, like this. And then I'm going to draw y equals, I'm going to draw f of x equals e to the negative x. Now the negative x is going to, um, it's going to take it and switch it so that it goes this way. So it goes, it's going to rotate around the y-axis. Because now instead of, uh, if I put x equals 1 in there, I'm really going to get e to the negative x, which is 1 over e. Oops. Okay, so, so if I put a negative 1 in, right, if I said x is equal to negative 1, that's going to give me y equals positive e, right, because a negative times a negative. So negative 1 and e, that would be about 2.7 like this. This is still going to say the same. And I'll end up getting something like that. And then my last step here with my last translation, I'm going to do f of x equals e to the negative x plus 1. Now, what's the plus 1 do? That goes up one unit. So I'm just going to take this, move up one, take this, move up one. And then I know that my horizontal asymptote now is going to be at 1, not at 0. And that's the graph of y equals negative x plus 1. All right. So there are some um, problems there on graphing exponential functions and using exponential properties. We'll see you next time, folks. Bye.